Wouldn't it be nice if you could snap your fingers and in went your poll system? That would be easy. But the truth is a poll system is one element of a larger strategy. With this in mind, if you want your poll system to be implemented in an effective manner, you should ensure that a few methodologies, principles, and pieces of education are clearly understood and implemented by your entire organization. What does that mean? It means there are some critical steps that a company must have in place before the poll system will be successful. Keep in mind that for every company, it is different. While we won't dig deeply into these prerequisites, over the next few modules we will introduce a few different pieces that must be in place for your poll system puzzle to be a success. We'll look at establishing a commitment to continuous improvement with a focus on waste reduction, implementing a regular team-based improvement events, measuring your improvements, creating a visual organization with 5S, educating people on quick changeovers, training multi-skilled people, and finally, cellular designs. These seven different concepts will be a great place for you to start your poll system journey with. We'll see you in the next module. In any new system, there will be an element of trial and error. Implementing a poll system can at times take the same approach too. With this in mind, it is very important that frontline employees, people at the Gemba, operators, supervisors, managers, and even executives must give their full support and commitment to continuous improvement and waste reduction. Without this, implementing a pull system cannot be successful. Continuous improvement is the act of making incremental and regular improvements in an organization. When people are bought into this mentality, the pull system only gets better from where you start. Without a mentality of continuous improvement, you may implement a new strategy or system, and that would be it. The system would remain the same forever, with no improvements or regular upgrades. As such, it is critical that people know, understand, and are part of continuous improvement. Part of continuously improving is focusing on removing things that do not add value. Waste can be defined as any activity that does not add value to a product or service. In many cases, waste not only adds no value, but adds costs instead. In addition to educating everyone about continuous improvement, it is just as important to educate and empower people to find and eliminate waste. Remember, establishing a commitment to continuous improvement with a focus on waste reduction is absolutely critical to the success of implementing poll systems. We'll see you in the next module. One person can make a difference in a big way, and a united team focused on a goal can make just as big, if not bigger, difference too. With this in mind, regular team-based improvement events are a must. Now, let's be clear. Does this mean that an individual cannot make improvements? No. Everyone should be striving to improve in small and simple ways every single day. What we are saying is that teams should also be improving together, whether that, that occurs through Kaizen events, Kaizen blitzes, brainstorming suggestions or sessions, suggestion boxes, or even CDACs. 
or cause and effect diagram with the addition of cards is a unique to an organization. The focus should be on getting the regular team-based improvement events going. Part of doing this will undoubtedly require you to remove barriers between your departments and create a culture where all employees participate, feel a sense of ownership and accountability, take responsibility, and work towards a common vision. As these regular improvements occur, you will see all aspects of your organization change for the better. Keep in mind that in the beginning of your journey, you may have to assign teams different improvements. But if the culture is good, people feel empowered and part of a team, you will see that improvement assignments will go down and regular team-based improvement events will go up. We'll see you in the next module. making the switch from push to pull, you need to measure your improvements. It's true, what they say, what gets measured gets improved. It is the same with pull systems. Your performance should be measured, and when there are improvements, people should be rewarded for those improvements. Process measures can help improve a variety of aspects in an organization. They improve quality, safety, time, and costs by enabling organizations to reduce the amount of waste in their processes. When they establish metrics in their processes, you can monitor points where there may be bottlenecks, waste, or variation. This can help you monitor and reduce forms of MUDA, MURI, and MURA. Value stream mapping is a great tool to outline a process and identify potential points where issues can be measured. With this in mind, you want to be sure that you have appropriate process measures in place before starting your pull systems journey. We'll see you in the next module. Improvements in an organization become much easier to see the impact when they are documented and shared with the entire organization or the relevant stakeholders. A visual organization is one where everything is visual. People need to be able to see and understand what is happening around them at a simple glance. Let's take for example a machine that breaks down. Nobody would see that help is needed on the machine if there was no signal. Likewise, it would be easier to see that help is needed on a line that has an ondon light. Ondon is a Japanese term that refers to a system of notification which is widely used today. One of the most powerful visual systems used today is the 5S system. The 5S system is a visual workplace management system that promotes safety, efficiency, and teamwork while making abnormalities visible. The system is often confused as a cleaning method. However, the purpose of 5S is in fact to eliminate waste and to create a safe working environment that supports TPM. The five major stages of the 5S system are sort, set in order, shine, standardize, and sustain. Creating a visual organization and implementation of visual systems like 5S can really add to the impact that your pull system will create. With this in mind, operators must be empowered and have full authority to freely implement these systems as well as use them. They should also have access and authority to stop lines and use tools like Ondons 
and other sensory devices that help draw attention or stop lines when issues arise. We'll see you in the next lecture. Changeover is the work required to change a specific machine, resource, work center, or line from making the last good piece of an item to making the first good piece of another item. As you could imagine, if changeovers take excessive amounts of time, it would be hard to pull demand through a value stream. This will cause bottlenecks to emerge all throughout an organization. A bottleneck is the term used for any function, department, resource, or facility whose needed capacity is less than the demand being placed upon it. The way to remove or reduce these bottlenecks in changeovers is to give people education and practice performing quick changeovers. Two techniques that are frequently used are SMED, and the REDUCE methodology. REDUCE is based on the SMED system. Single-minute exchange of dye is a concept developed by Shigeo Shingo, which seeks to perform all setup or changeover times in under 10 minutes. Without methods like these that REDUCE changeover times, it would be impossible for any organization to keep up with customer demand which is the objective of a poll system. We'll see you in the next module. The key to an organization's success when implementing a poll system might be within the people at your organization. Cross-training is a tool used by many organizations' leadership to improve both team and performance-based organizational success. It also has a profound impact on an individual's skill set. Cross-training, very simply, is when an employee is trained to proficiently perform multiple tasks in roles outside of their current responsibilities. This gives them the ability to use multiple machines, work in multiple processes, and be rotated throughout an organization. For example, teams in a cellular environment are not generally large. In these types of team-based environments, it is very realistic for an employee to be able to perform every job function within the cell. Cross-training becomes a must when implementing a pull system. Without it, you will have a difficult time balancing lines to meet your customer's demand. Another challenge is that once the skill is learned, the organization must find ways for the employees to maintain these newly developed skills. A best practice in successful cross-training efforts is to have regular job rotations so that the skills can remain fresh in their employees. It is absolutely essential that leadership, management, supervisors, and employees at all levels are innovating some type of cross-training program before moving forward with poll system implementation. We'll see you in the next module. In a poll system, it is very important that items can be polled easily from operation to operation. Functional environments limit this quite a bit. A functional layout is a workplace configuration in which operations or processes are defined by the type of work or function that they do. This can create queues, delays, and many forms of MUDA. 
In a pull system, the factory should be designed and based on a cellular design. In a cellular design, equipment is positioned according to process and not according to function. This creates an environment where products and information can flow freely while minimizing waste at the same time. With this in mind, one of the most important prerequisites you can have in place before you set up your pole system is cellular layouts and cellular design. We'll see you in the next module.